Hello, everybody. I hope you guys can see and hear us okay. Welcome to Wake Up Wednesday. You know, um, I'm gonna check and make sure here that we're live in the group. Okay, great. So um, we're doing things a little bit differently today. Um, I have a guest on with me today. And so you guys are gonna wanna welcome her. You know, um, the reason we're doing Wake Up Wednesdays is we all have this tendency to kind of just flatline. We keep doing what's comfortable. You know, it's kind of the law of thermodynamics. We keep doing, going the same speed and we keep doing the same thing over and over. And um, it's really the uncomfortable that where we start to kind of help, help us grow. And that's kind of where we um, have a tendency to need a wake up call. And um, so if you're watching this, even if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to go ahead and comment throughout this or ask questions. Um, I'll be going back um, to review the comments and things. So over the next couple of days, so feel free to comment. Um, so I want to welcome you guys all to the Zoom. And then we're also um, live streaming inside our business builders group. And so I appreciate you guys all tuning in. And um, today I want to introduce Denise Strecker to you. Um, you know, we recently connected with each other through a mutual friend. And today, as we kind of go through this exercise, we're going to all get a chance to get to know Denise a little bit better. And I bet Denise will learn um, maybe some things about herself also. I will tell you, I don't know Denise very well, but the things that I already do know about her is that she's very compassionate and um, is very passionate about the things that she loves and the thing and helping other people. And so, um, so I'm going to go through this exercise today and, um, and refer to my notes for just a minute too, but um, because this is going to help me understand Denise, what your hopes and your dreams are and kind of what your core values and gifts are. And then if we can understand what those are better, it can help us, um, help you lead in this business um, with your values and with your gifts, um, because this is really about you. And um, so I'm going to try to share my screen here with all of you. And um, now I don't have my, my IT person here with me, so you guys can bear with us as um, we share a soon. But this way, you guys can see what Denise is sharing with us as well. Um, Okay, so let me, let me see if I can set this up here. Amy, I still see the white box on my screen. Is that normal? Do you? Um, I'm not sure. Um, okay. <laughs> it shouldn't be. I don't know if you can try to, if you're able to move it out of the way or anything. Um, it but, won't. Um, it just it just gives me the option to leave or to sign in if I'm the host. So I don't, I don't want to mess things up by leaving. Okay. So I would just kind of stay with that. I think that, um, let me, let me get this set up here and, um, okay. I want to make sure you guys can see this. Okay. Um, Okay, are you got are you seeing that? Denise, are you, are you seeing I can um, that there's something behind the big white box on my screen, but I can't <laughs> see what it is. <laughs> um so let me see here if this is sharing. Okay, yeah, I think it's sharing here. Okay. Um okay, there we go. So um Okay, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Let me make sure, let me go over here and see if it's updated here on, on the Facebook group. Yes, I think so. Okay, so. 
Okay, so let's get started. So, so tell me um, a little bit about what your day looks like. What, what is it? What does a day in a life of Denise Strecker look like for you? Well, every day is a different day. That's for sure. Okay, uh, I've got five little granddaughters um, from the age of two months to ten years old, and so I, I keep those girls because I want to be a part of their lives for sure. Uh, Three of them lost their other grandmother about two years ago. So I'm the only one for them. So I spent a lot of time um, with that, but I, I get up in the morning and exercise and drink my coffee and have my quiet time and then just start about my day. So exercise, you said you have a quiet time. Mm-hmm. Um, is that just kind of a time of prayer and Bible just, reading? Is that kind of thing? Yes. Um, are you brushing your teeth anytime in there to, or taking oh, a shower? Anything? Sure, before I go meet anybody. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm getting dressed, doing the normal, the normal things like that, but it's not. I'm not a mom of school children, so I don't have a real definite routine of things every day. Um, uh-huh. um, so what else now? So are you keeping your five granddaughters throughout the day or? Oh, no, I just, I, my daughter lives in Houston. And so I once a week go down there and help her so she can go grocery shopping and stuff like that. And then the other three, two of them now are in um, school. so that's kind of off during the week for them. But the third one, uh, I take her, you know, once a week and I'm, I'm actually trying to this year coordinate the two, the two granddaughters on either end of town that are about the same age and taking that one with me so that they can play and, you know, get to know one another as cousins. And it only ties up one day of my week instead of two. (laughs) So you're coordinating kind of some play dates. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay. What else? Uh, so what are your, what is the, the daytime normally looking like? Um, afternoons and. Well, that, that and errands, my daytime three days a week until just recently has been physical therapy because of a shoulder surgery that I had, but I'm done with that now. So it's read up a little bit more more time. Um, I try to touch base with the people that I have signed up under me, you know, when things come my way that I think would be of interest to them. Um, I share that with them. I guess the thing that stumps me is when I, and I've talked to you about this before, when I'm out, I have opportunities. I I guess the same way of uh, sharing, sharing Jesus with people. It's like you've you kind of kick yourself later because it's like I had an opportunity and I didn't take it because I didn't know how to broach the subject. It's like, if I could ever just break through that one barrier, then I'm fine after that. It's just the getting started. So some of your day is spent kind of um, maybe it sounds like feeling a little frustrated, maybe that you didn't uh, see some opportunities. Yes, I would say so. Um, because they're everywhere. I mean, in the grocery store, I, I talked to a fellow the other day and I didn't have anything with me, um, to leave with him, but in the grocery store line, and he commented on how healthy my groceries looked. And we started talking about health and fitness and stuff like that. So, you know, it was, it was a good opportunity, but it's like, well, I don't have, I have nothing to give him. I don't know him. Um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what else? Evening time. Do you have a, do you have a spouse? I do. Anything yeah. that's involving him during the day or evening time or are you, um, you didn't mention eating anytime. Do you eat? I, I do eat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much probably. Uh, no, I like to cook. And so I'm usually busy in the afternoon. 
uh, making dinner. I, I recently got a new cookbook, so I've been trying new recipes and things like that. Okay. And then, you know, he comes home when it's not sweltering hot. We usually go for a walk in the evenings, but we haven't been doing that lately because we would pass out. Probably. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, here in Houston. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Um, what else in the evening time? Oh, just reading or watching television, that sort of thing. Um, what else? Anything I'm missing as you're looking at this? Do you feel like this encompasses, um, everything that you're doing each day? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as far as, like I say, every day's different, you know, um, there are times that I'm helping people. I, there's a couple that, um, an older couple that I help take to the doctor and sit with the lady if the man has to go somewhere sometimes and things like that. But mm -hmm. that's not every day. It's just as needed. Sure. Sure. So, um, so tell me now if, what would you be doing if time and money were not an issue? If someone was doing all of these things for you, how would you spend your time? <laughs> That's a good question. You may have never been asked that before. <laughs> That's never crossed my mind before, actually. Um, because I'm a, I am a doer. I'm, and it's hard to just sit for me, you know, or, mm -hmm. um, hmm. I don't know, probably be spending more time learning, I would think, taking classes, um, taking classes on what? Oh, well, I, I would love I love cooking classes and things like that, but I, I'm just real interested in, um, health and healing and diet and that sort of thing. So I spend a lot of time, actually spend a lot of time on, um, these webinar thing. No, well, not really a webinar, I guess, cause you don't, don't participate, but, um, like right now, there's one about the truth about vaccines and each day there's, you know, a couple of hours. So I usually listen to those, but I'm multitasking when I'm doing that. I'm not able to just sit down. If I had somebody doing all those things, I would just sit down and do it and take notes and mm -hmm. really focus on that sort of thing. Um, spend more time with my little grand girls. <laughs> doing what, what would you do if, if with them differently that if, if time or money were not <clears throat> an issue? Well, I mean, I would just be spending more, more time with them. I feel like a plate spinner sometimes, you know, with mm -hmm. all the different people I'm trying to take care of. <clears throat> so sometimes it has, um, you're thinking a little bit farther um, outside of maybe what you've thought of before um, to maybe sometimes we've forgotten a little bit about how to dream about what we could do or would do um, if, if someone were already doing um, some of the other things for us um, or if time or money were not an issue. So anything else that comes to mind that, um, Something well, that you're passionate about or something that you would love to be doing that you're not doing? I would, well, I would love to be traveling. Okay. Spending my uh, summers in Colorado. <laughs> that would be a dream, a big dream. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, you've stumped me. I'll let you keep thinking for just a minute. Okay.
what kinds of things would you be doing with your granddaughters? You said, you said spending more time, but doing what? Oh, taking them places and, um, I don't know, just, I, when my children were little, I worked their whole growing up life. So I kind of feel like I'm redeeming that time a little bit, I guess, maybe with the, the little one, little ones, mm -hmm. um, just enjoying them and noticing what they do and how they learn and stuff like that. It's just fun for me. Cause I kind of missed a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the thing. I mean, the, the two little ones, well, I guess they're not the littlest anymore. They're only two, almost three. So there's not a whole lot, you know, you can do, but, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anything else that comes to mind um, um, with, um, with your health or um, with, um, with other people? You mentioned before that you, that you help others. Is that something that you would continue to do um, if time or money were not an issue? Absolutely, yeah. So tell me about that. Well, I mean, I don't know. I would, I would probably check out, check in on people a little bit more often, that sort of thing, you know, spend a little more time. What does that look like for you when you say check in on it, on them? Well, stop by, you know, for a visit or, um, take them out for a cup of coffee or stuff like that. There's a lot of times I, I would love to do that and people are on my mind and I, but I don't have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is it just spending time with them or are you running errands for them? You mentioned taking them to appointments and things like that. Right. Both, both things. Um, but yeah, doctor's appointments and that sort of thing. Uh, one couple in particular, and hopefully they'll get to where they don't need that anymore, but they're both kind of down right now. So they yeah. just need somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, just looking here at some of the things that you've, that you've shared, um, so I've just kind of written, written some words um, up at the top that um, seem to really represent you well um, and seem to be kind of where you would focus when, um, if time or, or money were not an issue. Um, so what do you call somebody who loves to learn? <laughs> A student? <laughs> a student, yeah, a learner, right? Um, yeah. What do you, what do you call somebody who cares about others? Uh, I don't know. I Sometimes I, I think of um, somebody who either is, um, um, is either inspiring others or teach a teacher or a coach. I don't know if you see yourself as that with your, with your granddaughters um, as like a coach or a teacher or yeah. maybe a leader um, for them. You didn't mention that, but, um, but you talked a lot about caring for them. Um, and so I don't know which one of those words would you feel like describes best with that caring with them? Um, I, I like coach. Yeah. I, because I think a coach is more than just a teacher they're also an encourager, mm -hmm. you know, you can do this and that sort of Cheering thing. Cheering you on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do you call somebody who serves? A servant. <laughs> yeah. And really, um, so if time or money are not, not an issue for you, really, you would spend your time being somebody who's a learner and a coach and a servant is really a servant leader. Um that's really 
who you are. Have you ever thought of yourself as that? And I guess not. No, not really. Um, I'm curious, the things that you mentioned kind of in this top section here, um, learning and more time with your granddaughters, travel, checking in more on others, those kinds of things. Why, why are those important to you? Um, you didn't know you were going to ask such hard questions, huh? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use your brain. <laughs> brain but it's okay. Well, it's okay. I, well, I don't know. I, I guess I want people to feel valued, you know, that like, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it definitely has your wheels spinning a little bit, doesn't it? It does. It does. Um, this is why this, this exercise is really um, powerful because um, many of us so often have forgotten how to dream and how to think outside of the fact that if we had more time freedom or if we had more financial freedom, what would we be doing differently with our life or would we be doing anything differently with our life? And, um, and are we um, being able to use the gifts and the talents that God has given us uniquely, you uniquely, Denise, um, in a powerful way? And, um, and are you being used to fulfill the purpose that God's created you um, for? And so um, it helps us to kind of step back and look at this big picture here and, and think about this a little bit more deeply. I know that um, when I first did this exercise was probably about a year and a half ago. And um, my this bottom half uh, of the thing was completely and utterly overwhelmed. And, um, and I would be doing a whole lot of other things with with my time, if I, and my, and myself, if I had more time and financial freedom and, um, and what I've seen is with doTERRA that not only has it been able to create, um, more time freedom, but also financial freedom, um, to be able to accomplish some of the other things that I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to homeschool my boys full time. I wanted to be able to, um, to be able to focus on the needs of others too, even outside of my family. Um, I, I wanted to be able to, um, to travel with my family. Um, my husband's now able to come home. This is at his last week, actually, in, um, in full-time ministry, at least in the walls of a church. And, um, and so it's um, whether you're wanting to do this as a hobby or whether you're wanting to do this um, full-on as a business, um, there's aspects of doTERRA when you, um, really start to begin to, um, um, to kind of dive in, you can begin to see these shifts happen. And it's really kind of a, a beautiful experience that, um, you know, doTERRA isn't, um, isn't easy. It's actually hard work, but it's very simple. And, um, and it's very, very rewarding, um, beyond even the time and financial freedom that you begin to see, but also with the, um, the relationships that are formed, not only with people like yourself, Denise, um, um, and other people that you, um, that are, are joining in the effort of, um, sharing with others or building a business, but also in the new people that you meet, um, like-minded people who are seeking out some natural tools. Maybe they've been frustrated for a while. Maybe they haven't found tools that work for them and helping change lives. Um, not only, and in turn, changing your own life. And so, um, so many unexpected benefits from that. So, um, so I'm, I would be curious to hear, um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen here for a minute so we can be a little bit more full screen here. And, um, and I'm, 
I'm curious, Denise, what, um, if this has been, um, what your thoughts on kind of the, how this exercise has been for you? Well, it's made me think, it's made me think about a lot of things. And you were talking about when you started uh, mentioning about your husband being able to come home, I would love that. We, we have a farm that we bought in New Waverly and, um, I would love for him to be able to stop commuting to Houston every day and for us to, <laughs> to move. Sorry. Somebody's at <laughs> But they're leaving real quick now. <laughs> it, it's not a it's not a fa- Facebook live without either a dog barking or a child no. or a baby crying. So it's it's all good, Denise. Just sound asleep and and realize that she was not doing her guarding job, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, I would love that. Um, that's another thing, you know, we're really passionate about food and the food that we eat and how poor quality of food that there is, even organic things that you buy because we've depleted the soil so that um, we don't get the nutrients that they used to get from eating the a tomato grown in the garden or whatever. So we're we're working on that and would love to uh, eventually have that farm opened up so that we could supply people with good food and Mm. that sort of thing. So I love that. So you're even thinking beyond. um, I love that because now you're dreaming too. You're a dreamer now. Um, You know, you're even thinking beyond yourself. I thought you were going to tell me that you, you know, wanted to be able to farm, to be able to supply better food, quality for your own family, but you're even talking beyond that, helping provide it for even other people too. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I think it would just be, it's a very uh, holistic approach, I suppose, the essential oils. I've gotten a a new interest in herbs as well. Um, And then, and then food, you know, kind of all goes together. You need all of that. So it's, it's interesting. Some people will start their wellness journey with kind of shifting their mindset with food and then will stumble upon essential oils, which is kind of what my family did. Um, and then other people will start their kind of wellness journey with essential oils. And then all of a sudden they will start expanding and falling into other natural ways and other parts of their wellness journey of, you know, cleaning up their eating habits and um, exercising more and those kinds of things or cleaning out the toxins in their home. So it's all this journey that all ties together. You're right, Denise. It all is a very holistic approach. Um, And I love that, that, that my story has helped you think about possibilities for you because I will tell you, I probably would have never, if somebody else had told me that, they brought their husband home and now they're doing this together um, as a family. I would have thought that's great for them, but there's no way that could ever happen for me. And, um, and, and not that my husband um, didn't like his job or didn't find it fulfilling. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, uh, But, but we have now have the freedom to be able to do whatever God's leading us to do. And that's what we feel like God's leading us to do right now. And um, what a blessing um, it's been to be able to see that come to fruition, um, taking a lot of hard work and, um, and investment, but in, in our time and, um, and things like that, but the fruit, uh, is, has been so worth it. So, um, Thank you so much, Denise, for taking the time to do this with us. Um, You were such a great sport and trooper with doing it. I hope it wasn't too um, too yucky for you or (laughs) not enjoyable or too difficult or anything. I hope you enjoyed it too. And and thank you for for letting us do this together with with our with our builders group because I know that this is going to be helpful for someone else and um, and not, maybe they want to do the the why exercise too to kind of help deepen their um, deepen their why and figure out exactly why they're doing what they're doing or or maybe dream a little bit more so um, so I appreciate you Denise thank you for giving of your time and. Um, And hopefully this has been happily kind of help you discover yourself even a little bit more too. It's been very helpful. Thanks a lot.
Good. Um, okay, well, we will um, end here and you guys feel free to ask questions or comment below and we'll be going back to um, to view these later. And um, let me see how I can even, um, let's see how we even stop this. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.